in Denmark. Of course, uh, without mentioning much, uh, we should thank uh, Ambassador Jan Tapp Christensen. Um, he, I think, conceptualized, initiated, and uh, willed that this day will come wherein uh, both of us will be able to, to share uh, with friends that uh, what dynamic relations uh, Philippines and uh, Denmark has. And uh, I think and I believe that Ambassador Yang Tap is the greatest gift to Danish Philippine uh, relationship uh, for the past four years. He's, he's worked hard, uh, brought uh, to the Philippine consciousness uh, where Denmark is and uh, what Denmark can do in terms of uh, helping the Philippines. Uh, I remember that when I congratulated uh, Yang Tap for, for Denmark topping the uh, anti-corruption league table, he just told me, uh, business as usual. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for, countries, for countries like the Philippines, we do need a little bit of push, a little bit more than a push in terms of good governance, and then at the same time, and I congratulated uh, Jan Tap on the, I don't know how to pronounce it, French uh, cooking contest, uh, Bukus Dior, uh, for Denmark winning it. I think he asked me to look at who's the second, the third laser uh, in that contest. No French uh, made it to the top three, it's all Scandinavian. Of course, Denmark was number one. Aww. So it's, uh, it's uh, always good to see. Uh, that we have partners with top league tables and um, when uh, the news came out that Denmark was a uh, big left up, uh, second place in the most happiest uh, people in the world census, I think uh, we thought of filing a petition for a big <laughs> <laughs> and, and the whole thing because uh, we all know where the happiest people live is the, my wife and I are glad that uh, we're, we're based here right now. And I thank all of you for coming. Uh, let me, first of all, uh, well, put a shout out to some people that joined me today. Uh, my loving wife, Fides, uh, she's, she's here. Always a source of inspiration. I think you've heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> Behind every successful man, beside every successful man, is a woman named Fides. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to be successful in that regard. And then I'm also joined by uh, my Consul General, and Deputy Chief of Mission, Maria Antonina, uh, Bena, and Dosa Bena. She's the lady who did a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of uh, having us uh, well placed in Denmark and uh, made pretty much a, a strong effort during the time that. Uh, the winter months of last year, trying to get us get us settled, and then we also have Mary Headforce, uh, our our great officer uh, that loves Denmark more than Sweden. <laughs> 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 and then we also have our embassy cultural officer, and in the meantime, a standing economic uh, officer, Evelina Saldariaga. And then uh, we're also uh, joined by our honorary consul, uh, Paul Pro, the Dane with the heart for the Filipinos. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's it's great to be in this building. Uh, if you're, it's your first time in this building, uh, let me welcome you to the future site of the Philippine Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> this building or this institution has linkage back to the Pacific. It's the East Asiatic Company that wanted to establish uh, routes of cooperation and friendship uh, between Denmark and our people within Southeast Asia. And today, we build upon this great tradition. For those who are familiar with the Philippines, let me refresh your memories. Uh, if you thought that we have two islands, three islands, we have seven, more than 7,600 islands and a nice low tide to be a higher count depending on how our neighbors behave. <laughs> our total land area is around 300,000 square meters, about the size of Italy or the U.S. state of Arizona, seven times the size of Denmark. 
Our population is around 105 million or 18 times that of Denmark. Our per capita income is around 3,250, or if you want the more accurate measurement of purchasing power parity, I wanted to drop it in so that uh, you'll be impressed with me. It's around 9,500. Okay. Denmark's PPP is around 51,000, 55,000. Or if you want a better thing to chew on, what the economists use is the Big Mac index. The price of Big Mac is 33 percent cheaper in the U.S. and in the Philippines than in the U.S. It's around 19 percent more expensive in Denmark. So you can compare your salaries and your uh, purchasing power better with this uh, measurement. And if you want to use the iPad index, the latest iPad model is ten dollars more expensive in the Philippines than California and $179 more expensive in Denmark than the Philippines. So you know what's in Jan Tak's luggage. <laughs> <laughs> the Philippines has a strong commitment to multilateral bodies. It is a founding member or having taken significant roles in the UN, the World Trade Organization, ASEAN, ASEAN Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, and the East Asia Summit. It is Asia's first republic, a constitutional democracy that has three co-equal branches of government, two-chamber legislative body with a European model party list system. Our party list system, the elections, easier to understand than Denmark. Then term limits for all elected officials. There's a limit of one term for the president and the vice president, two consecutive terms for senators, three consecutive terms for representatives, governors, vice mayors, and the other elected officials. Remember the word consecutive, because they keep coming back. <laughs> and our Philippines is predominantly Christian, about 90%, and uh, significant Muslim population of around 6%. This one, uh, I have to mention this because this is not government accomplishment, this is accomplishment of everybody involved in pushing the Philippines. GDP growth, the Philippines is 6.7% last year, one of the most impressive in Asia. Inflation has gradually been benign during the last five to six months after experiencing a two month spike last year. Global rating agencies, I don't know if I think you're familiar with this, S&P, Fitch, Moody's, have given the Philippines above investment grade ratings. In fact, last month, S&P raised its ratings, <clears throat> not just above investment grade, with sentiments of other upgrades if we stay the course. Uh, the Philippine economy is, in terms of uh, output, is 10% agriculture, 30% industry, and 60% services. This, this slide tries to give you a picture of what we aspire for. Based on the nationwide council survey conducted by the Philippine Economic Planning Agency, or NEDA, the Philippine aspiration or dream is a strong-rooted, comfortable, and secure life by the year 2040. Matatag, maginhawa, at panang almost like a Danish way of life in the Pacific. <laughs> I refer you to Ambition 2040, 2040. Ambition 2040. Google it the moment you go home and you go to the Netherlands website. So the government of the day, or the Duterte administration, intends to lay the foundation by 2022, or the end of its term, for inclusive growth, a high trust and resilient society, and a globally competitive economy. If it does succeed, we will be on our way to Ambition 2040. If you come out of this briefing remembering only one thing, this is the best thing to remember about the Philippines. Three words having the same meaning and the same pronunciation. Build, build, build. This is the centerpiece program, the government of the day. It's translated into Ushering 